Hundreds of you requested it, so now you're going to get it. A proper woodcutter's toolkit. Really nice to have two saws. My granddad's old uh, match container here. True temper, flint edge, and talk to a guy that actually does it for a living. And I'm gonna find out what he says. In addition to my saws, I've got pretty much everything fits inside a milk crate and a toolbox right here. So let's open and get into the milk crate and see what we got in there. All right, go get yourself a coffee, cup of, cup of coffee. We got a lot of things to go through here and uh, let's get into it. All right, so let's start with this little bag right here. Kind of a nice little container you can kind of keep some personal items in uh, to help to get thing, keep things from getting damaged. Uh, first off are the, um, the eye protection. Regular safety glasses don't work very good when you use like a chainsaw because you work, you exert yourself so much that uh, it's, you just sweat them and fog them all up. So a lot of the wildland fi firefighters and loggers have went to these bug style goggles and it's got a fine wire mesh. You can get these in three different sizes, you know, depending on personal preference, but uh, these are excellent and they can fit little kids or, or your wife, girlfriend, yourself, and these are really nice. So um, I, I think that these are the best there are and you can keep them around your neck and you don't have to about them getting scratched and they're nice easy to access. Um, I've got uh, earplugs here uh, that I keep squ squishy plugs. Um, I like the earmuffs when I'm working around here but if I'm going back and forth and doing other things uh, and, and falling and wearing a hard hat those are not very compatible so I keep the, the squishy plugs uh, for uh, if I'm falling and needing to put a hard hat on. Um, I keep just my granddad's old uh, match container here with some waterproof matches in it used to carry this this around. I remember this from the time I was just a little kid. He always carried it with a string on it and he would put the string through a belt loop and uh, tie it on. He, he always tied everything on, always put a lanyard on things before lanyards were cool. But a lot of, this is really cool, a lot of wear on that. So I, I keep, that's kind of sentimental for me. Um, I keep a Leatherman um, wave in here. Basic, just a multi-tool, handy. And th these are not, I'm not saying you have to have this stuff, it's just it's just stuff that I have. I'm just comparing notes here. We learn from each other, and so I'm not saying you have to have all this stuff, but just a little piece of cord and, and a whistle. Um, I've got a uh, my yellow raincoat, uh, which you've seen me wear in all my timber framing or saw milling videos that packs down really tight uh, that I, um, that, you know, it's not too special to me, so if I tear it or you know, rip it up, it doesn't matter. You know, these are the perfect type of things to get at thrift stores. Uh, Mrs. Ranker Star and I, like we like to go to thrift stores and on our, our date nights and look around and see what we can get. You know, we'll give ourselves a budget of, let's say, $40 each or $30, whatever it is, and um, and see what we can get. You're know, always looking for nice quality things, wool, you know, just nice stuff, and that's a perfect place to get something like that. Um, an extra handkerchief. I always carry one, but um, this is really nice to just to wipe sweat or to strain water or just a million different things. And and I usually have good gloves with me, but when my gloves get a little bit worn, uh, a little holes in the fingers, I'll I'll just stash them in different places because you know I've been many times and I've forgotten my gloves. And it's nice to, to these still have a lot of wear in them. It's nice to have those. I just keep those in there and forget about them. And also in regards to gloves, uh, a lot of folks ask about where to get the best gloves or the gloves that I wear and the best price hands down are the Wells and Lamont gloves it's a three pack at Costco and I think you can order them online if you don't have access to a Costco and they are so cheap you get three pairs they go from medium all the way up to extra large in size for around twelve dollars you know and if you price good quality leather gloves uh, that's a bargain uh, three pair for twelve somewhere around there give or take um, and that's the best deal and then I've got a some batteries here. Looks like I got a lighter and some fire starter. Uh, extra pair of contacts or if you wear glasses and it's funny my, my granddad he you know, he lived through the depression so anything that was free it was given him free. Uh, boy he he was all over that. He liked to go to buffets because he knew what it was like to be without food and and so that stuck with him. He never forgot that so it was always a, a treat for him to go to a buffet where he could have all that he wanted because it wasn't always that way for him. So he worked for a company that um, after he was retired as a mechanic that gave away these little free knives. Uh, by <laughs> He's got them everywhere. Everything he's got has got these things in them and uh, um, uh, so I, I've got lots of those. He's given those to me. So, So that's kind of the personal kit right there. A lot of my grandfather's stuff in here, a lot of memories. This uh, this can right here, uh, for example, it, it holds my fuel filter. But uh, there's a story behind this, maybe I've shared it before. It's, it's Cook's Dance Wax. 
And I grew up in a community where uh, the young people got together and, and it would formally dance, and, and we did that growing up. And, and you dance, or you did back in the day on a wooden floor, and it'd get kind of sticky. You can't slide your feet. So they would take this. It was kind of a dance. They called it dance wax. It was a powder, a granule stuff, and throw it on the floor every once in a while so your feet would slide across it. So uh, when I was little, he would always talk about when we'd go hunting, he said, "Boy, we're gonna, you know, we're really gonna kill him this year. We're gonna shoot some, we're gonna shoot some dance wax at him." And I never knew what that meant for years and years. Him and his brother back and forth would talk about that. And what it was is that they'd kept their ammunition in this dance wax can. And so, that, when they were referring to shooting dance wax, they were referring to uh, this can. So uh, that's kind of fun. But in the can, uh, I keep my fuel filter. And this is a special filter. You, you've seen maybe smaller ones from Coleman that uh, fuel, they'll filter out water. One of the worst things you can get in your saw is, uh, is water. You don't want to get that in a two-stroke engine. So uh, I'll run my fuel in there and then I'll keep, just keep a couple extra rags down there because it seems to drip for a bit. Um, but that, that's what goes in there. And that's really a nostalgic item for me growing up with that. Uh, it's not a safety sally, certainly, to have a very comprehensive first aid kit, especially when you're cutting firewood by yourself, um, and have it clearly labeled. You know, I label this stuff so if I'm working with other people, you can see here, uh, so they can quickly get to it. And, and there, there's water in here, and there's a first aid kit in here, and uh, good to have. I'll take this out and keep it really close to me. And a first aid kit you want to keep with, if you're going to be working with a chainsaw, it's going to need to be really, really heavy in um, the blood sponges and blood stoppers and tourniquets, that type of thing. So uh, you can see here, it's really, I'm not going to go into the whole kit, but um, a lot of uh, blood sponges. And then I'll throw a few extra things in. There's some, there's some uh, lip balm and some um, sunscreen and some tape. Uh, looks like there's some quick cloth. That's pretty controversial, and, and I really don't know what where the state of the medical field is you know with that right now but I've heard some pros and cons so I'll have to look into that but uh, even if you do have to use it's better than dying right so uh, a good good comprehensive first aid kit with lots of um, lots of blood sponges that type of thing uh, let's see what else we got gas can this gas can has been really a good one um, I found this because this is kind of what the loggers use in this area and it's got two compartments in it and this holds the bar oil and this holds the, the gasoline mix and, and I like that I like to be able to have one one gas can it's not the fastest gas can but it just works good it's got if you take these off it's got these plastic deals on here uh, to keep it from spilling uh, which, you know, as I said, it's not very fast, but I, I've knocked it over so many times that I just take a minute and use it because, you know, bar oil is getting expensive and, and you hate to hate to run out of gas when you're up there. Uh, I even fell a big dug fur on this and smashed it flatter than a pancake and put it out in the sun and it just came right back in. So I don't know if you can still get these. I think they still make them. I, I think you can go to Madsen's online, just type in Madsen's logging or Bailey's logging, and they'll have something like this. Hopefully they haven't put that stupid safety valve um, on the top. Um, I keep a, a canteen, and um, I, I've labeled my, been labeling my water because uh, getting other people working in, in, with, with me uh, will... You know, pe people do the strangest things, but they'll grab a can. If you use a jug uh, like a used grape juice jug, and you put gasoline or something in it, you know, it, it's just you gotta label that stuff sometimes, even with kids. Um, but this is a wildland, old wildland tank, and just just a standard canteen. I like to have a container or at least some way to put it on my belt um, if I do need to carry it. But you know, if I needed to walk out somewhere, you know, because it just uh, just another. Just having some options. Nice to have a folding saw for cutting vine maples and branches. I, I don't n n normally take three of them here, but I, this is a kit that I grab when we're working in the woods. So a little folding saw, or or you know something like this. These real aggressive teeth. The, this is a Barnell saw. And this one I think here is a that's a Baco saw. That's been a good saw too. Um, and then a little Baco Laplander, but some type of a saw to cut roots and things. So you. Things that you don't want to get dull your axe or, or get your chainsaw out for. Then I carry a little hatchet. Uh, of course, I use that for pounding wedges and a million different things. I mean, I always have that. You guys, you guys see that all the time. 
And then uh, my, um, my good splitting maul here, uh, about a five pounder or so. And as you've seen in the past, uh, using this fire hose with pop rivets to make really good harnesses. And just uh, old belts or things you can find people throwing away uh, to tie it up. But I like that uh, fire hose uh, for making uh, sheaths for your axes are really nice. And then, um, of course, the pickaroon is one of the best things for getting firewood. It's really a back saver. And, and a, a guy just made one um, and sent me attached the video to my pickaroon video. And he made one out of a piece of ironwood and just put a spike, a bolt through it and ground it down. Did a really nice job and didn't cost him anything. And he was talking how much he liked it. He'd never even heard of one before and he called it just an arm extension. And I thought that that was a great way to put it. It's just an, a back saver and an arm extension that uh, just makes your, your life easier. And then I carry uh, my double bitted axe here. This is my, um, this is a heirloom family axe. It's a uh, Kelly Kelly Works True Temper Flint Edge. You guys have seen this. I've cut down trees with this before, with a double bevel, the grind on it, with a real tapered uh, for falling, and then a more of a, a steeper uh, grind there for uh, working in roots or, or where you have a chance of hitting the ground. But nice to have a single bitted or a double bitted axe. Uh, rarely use it, but if you had to, you know, if you only have one chainsaw. Uh, you can uh, you could chop it out if you got it pinched and, and got in a bind up there. So lots of different things, lots of reasons to have that. And then I bring always bring a, a real crummy uh, splitting ball, something with a it can have a broken handle, you know, just something really bad. And I use this for a wedge rather than just having a wedge. That way I can it's got enough a handle on it that I can sink it into a round and then I can strike this with my good splitting wedge. So instead of carrying wedge, an extra wedge, I just carry an extra splitting ball. And then I've, I've been throwing in these loppers. Um, these are kind of handy too. I don't know that I would put these in my every wood kit, but if you had a little hand saw, that they're, that they're just fine for that. But uh, that's the contents of the, of the milk crate. So let's go over and dig into the toolbox. All right, let's break open the toolbox here. See what we got. Um, Chainsaw chaps, uh, good to have. I don't always wear them, but uh, sometimes I do. You know, depending on your level of experience, you got to make that decision. But if you're a new guy, I would definitely recommend them. Go look uh, online, do an image search for chainsaw injuries, and you'll be convinced. Uh, this is just a little box here where I keep my sh uh, replacement chains, uh, sharp chains in here that I've um, uh, that are ready to go that I haven't used. So, got uh, two extra chains for for each bar. Keep those in there. And then uh, I've got a, a small stone here. This is just a uh, like a Lansky stone, uh, two-sided, of course, and a fine for putting an edge on axes or or my hatchet and such. And then I've got here a um, this is a, a faller's belt that I uh, keep where I keep my wedges in, and I'll keep my file for filing my chainsaw. I'll keep usually three or four wedges in here. Um, these are handy even if you're not falling. Just if you have something that's really wanting to pinch on you, you can get a wedge and, and hold it in there till you can get your bar through there. But uh, that will fit on the belt with um, with this. And you've all seen this. The Grizzly Peak Industries, the aluminum uh, axe hatchet scabbard. You can get these in all different sizes for the company, and, and they're really cheap, and, and it's a great product. You can, see, you can see the contact information right there. Now tell them that I sent you. Um, he's been a really nice guy and, and I, I have uh, wanted to support his product because these are excellent. Uh, what I do if you tell, I need, need to tell him the problem with this, this hatchet, I, I figured out a, a big solution for this that uh, needs to be done and I'm going to do it as soon as I find the right, right magnet. I'm kind of looking for a rare earth magnet, a really small powerful one. But this, this rattling around when you're walking is is could be easily repaired uh, fixed by putting a magnet in there something that you could pop rivet to one side or the other that would suck that head over and just hold it and keep it from rattling um, if you contact grizzly peak enterprises you know tell them mention tell them that i mentioned that and, and i'll do the same and see if he can't come up with something that would uh, keep that from rattling uh, it'd be a lot simpler and easier than lining it with felt and it would just last forever and i can't see any downside to that whatsoever um, good heavy leather belt 
Uh, you kind of wear gunfighter style. Uh, works good with uh, with a faller's belt. And if I am falling and I'm doing a timber that's going to be go out to log trucks or marketable, then I'll uh, have uh, the excellent Spencer loggers tape. The best tapes in the whole world. These are a 50 foot reel tapes uh, for measuring different lengths of logs. And then of course you take the, some come with it, sometimes you have to do it, a bent horseshoe nail. Uh, you bend it in a fashion there, you can put your thumb on it and press that into the bark, the heavy bark of the fir trees or pine trees, and then you can walk along and, and reel this out. But uh, the Spencer Logging Tape from the U.S. Tape Company are actually official sponsors of, the, of my channel, and they provide uh, tapes and products, lots of different great products that you've seen in videos, and um, I'm, I'm happy for their support. They've been uh, really behind the channel. Uh, files. I keep uh, extra files. Uh, the Swiss files are, uh, I've used, always used them for years. They seem to be the best. The professionals like them. You know, when, when I make a decision, if I'm going to make a decision to buy something, what I don't, I don't usually go off of is manufacturer hype. I go to people who use tools for a living. If I want to decide on what welder I'm going to buy, I'm going to go to a fab shop and, and talk to a guy that actually does it for a living. And I'm going to find out what he says. And I might not always be able to afford what, what he gets, but I'll learn a lot and I'll learn what not to get. So, you know, this is a classic example. You know, go see what the professionals use, guys that file char f saws for a living, and they'll tell you the difference between a Swiss file and a Mexican-Chinese file. So uh, I, I like to go with those. Um, I've got a stump vise here. This is a, a great tool. You can, still makes these. There's a lot of other companies that make them. You can get them a little bit less for probably the same thing. Um, and what this does is you simply... You, you pound that into a stump or a round of wood and then you lock your bar down and it makes it much easier for sharpening in the field. Um, a great, great tool. I've got a little mini first, no, this, yeah, this was a first aid kit. This is the first aid kit case that the Forest Service gives you when you're, or they used to, when you worked in wildland fire and I, I, uh, I use it. I've got a, what I got in here? Some, some oil. I've got an extra drive sprockets for um, the chainsaws, uh, fuel filters that should be probably kept a little cleaner than that, um, spark plugs, and then it looks like I got a cheap throwaway multi-tool uh, just in case back up there. So just a few spare parts there for the saws I keep in there. The nice thing about steel chainsaws is they all use the same spark plugs, so that's really handy. All right, so we, and then we've got a chainsaw tool uh, standard here for screwdriver for tensioning the bar and doing uh, removing the spark plug. So I usually I usually carry that in my faller's belt too, kind of like that. And then we've got a a raker guide. If you don't know um, what a raker guide is, then you're and you're probably not filing your chainsaws properly. Uh, you can go to my YouTube channel and and you can see a comprehensive video on on how to correctly file chainsaws. And this is a raker guide, and then the corresponding file to knock those down. Um, after you your chainsaws your chains get filed down a bit, those rakers need to be looked at. I've got a, a grease gun. Um, not all chainsaws uh, have a greasable front sprocket. The, the Windsor bars do, the Oregon or the steel bars typically do not. So I do have some Windsor bars, so when I refill the gas and oil, I give that a squirt. It's just a plunger style. You just pack it with uh, waterproof grease and uh, grease that tip. Now, does it, is it necessary? I don't know. Uh, I carry extra boot laces. Really a drag to break a boot lace uh, on your boots when you're out in the field. Uh, hard to replace if you don't have, don't have one. Um, a, a four position, just a cheap screwdriver, number two, number three bits on those, I believe. This is a, um, a log dog made out of a flat bar. Whenever you need to keep something from turning or a million different reasons, uh, you can see my chainsaw sawmilling uh, where I use this a lot. But uh, one or two of these is nice to have and you can just make it for nothing out of just some scraps that you have. There's some marking tape uh, for if I just wanted to mark different trees uh, that I wanted to uh, cut, kind of go through. Especially, it's nice if you're working with other folks on your property and you can go around and mark the trees that you want to save or, or mark the trees that you want to cut, and that way no mistakes are made. So, or you, if you think worry about getting lost, this is really good. It's like a, you can leave a trail of breadcrumbs behind you and mark these. 
the old ways you used to blaze the trees. You know, you take your hatchet and everyone had their own kind of a dot and a dash or two dashes and a dot. You kind of follow that out, but that's um, fallen out of favor with the environmental movement. So this is the alternative, um, maybe a worse alternative because this stuff always gets left in the forest. I keep a couple of um, uh, repair clamps for broken cable. Uh, I often use my worn winch on my truck, either on the front or the back receiver, and a broken cable uh, can uh, really uh, put a damper on your day. So with a couple of these, uh, I can splice and, and repair a cable and usually get by. I've used them many times. Um, I've got a small file here. To be honest with you, I don't know why that's in there. It just is. I've got a little roll of Gorilla duct tape uh, for reasons that I can't think of right now, as well as a little electrical tape, a little bit of, uh, this is the wax that comes with the tin pants from the Filson company. You guys see me, I wear a lot of their clothes. Actually, I'll tell you about them. If you, Maybe you noticed that I've been wearing this, this new hat lately, and I really like it. It, man, you want to talk about a beautifully made, handmade quality hat right there. You can see their name on it. Uh, the reason I have this is, uh, I sent a, sent a shirt back to them uh, maybe a year ago for some warranty work and uh, they kind of forgot about it. And so they contacted me and I'd forgotten about it and, and said, hey, we're sorry. We, we want to give you a credit for that shirt. You can pick out anything you want to and we want to send you this hat for free. So they sent that and I thought that was really nice of them. Uh, a little small can of mix in case something were to happen and I were to spill my gas out, I wouldn't be without the mix. I could stop at a gas station and, and get it. One thing I can't replace at a gas station is this. So I keep, this is enough for one gallon. And then a small eight millimeter wrench uh, for some of the bolts on the saw. And then this is a, a little Torx that I will find on, on some of the steel products. And then a carburetor adjustment screwdriver for the steel also. And then an Allen wrench. Uh, I'm not sure what all these fit, but I, I, I put I, I put them in there for a reason, so they must be for something. And I keep a sharpie for because I just like I like sharpies. So uh, that that's about it for the kit. In addition, of course, if you're going to be doing any falling, um, a hard hat of some sort, nice to have. Uh, a lot of people use those still full face shield hats, but I don't like that very well. I found them to be kind of cumbersome, and. Um, and I prefer this. I like the Bugs goggles uh, with the hat. It just gives it a little more flexibility. And then uh, if I'm going to be all day, then I'll take a whole gallon of water, you know, big, big, big water and uh, or multiple people. You figure about a gallon per person uh, if you're going to be working hard at least. Um, gallon in an extra canteen is nice. So. so that's it for the Wood Fallers, uh, Timber Fallers, or it's not the Timber Fallers kit, it's the the firewood cutters kit. Uh, share share your uh, what what you have with yours. Uh, let, let me know um, if you can think of anything else, and we learn from each other. So as I said, it's, I'm not saying you have to have all this stuff. This is just what I have, and and it all fits in a pretty compact unit, and it works. I, I don't if I grab this, I've never went out and not had what I needed. So I hope you enjoyed the video. Thanks for watching, and we will see you uh, see you on the next one.